Bayes' theorem is named after a Presbyterian minister who developed it. And Bayes' theorem states that the probability of A given B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A all over the probability of B. And it's often useful to expand this denominator. So I'll rewrite this, the probability of B given A times the probability of A over the probability, whoop, let me get this right, over the probability of B given A times the probability of A plus the probability of B given the complement of A times the probability of the complement of A. And this looks overwhelming. I understand that. But let's go ahead and take it piece by piece and see how we can apply it to the breast cancer question that we've already asked. And the key here, as you'll see, is the definition of the events A and B. And we already have those defined in this scenario, right? The event A is that the child has this genotype big D, little d, they're the heterozygote. And the event B is that the child eventually develops breast cancer given. And so we know that we know the probability of B given A, right? We know the probability that the child will develop breast cancer given that the child is a heterozygote because we got that from the problem definition, right? We know that somebody who is heterozygous, heterozygous or who is homozygous has a 50% probability of developing breast cancer over their lifetime. And so that's 0.5. We also know the probability of A. We know the probability that this child is a heterozygote because of transmission genetics, right? The probability that they are a heterozygote is the probability that they got that dominant allele from their mother. So that's also 0.5. We can go ahead and fill in those same numbers down here in the de denominator, 0.5 times 0.5. What is the probability that a child gets breast cancer given that she does not have the heterozygous genotype? Well, the other option for this child's genotype is the homozygous recessive, right? The child can either be a heterozygote big D little d or they can be a homozygote little d little d because they got the little d from their father and the little d from their mother. Right, and the probability of them developing breast cancer if they have the homozygous recessive genotype, we also know already, right? It's 13% or 0 0.13, and the probability that they have that homozygous recessive genotype is 0 0.5. And so now that we've got the problem set up, again, it's just some math. Right, 0 0.25 divided by 0 .2, 0 0.25 plus 0 0.31, again, approximately 0 0.80. And again, I know that this equation can be intimidating. Right, I found it intimidating as a student, and the real key here the key to using Bayes' theorem is in choosing the right events for A and B, right? You want to make sure that A given B is the posterior, right? This is the thing you want to know, and that B given A is the prior, right? That's the thing you already know. And so when you apply Bayes' theorem, I find it easier to actually say out loud what these events are. So not the probability of B given A, but the probability that a child gets breast cancer given that she is not heterozygous. 
right? So much of genetics is based on random outcomes. But the entire science of probability and statistics is based around understanding random things. This may be our first encounter with the intersection between genetics and statistics, but it is far from the last.